Now, here's the belief system. The belief system is it's incurable. How many people have been told that? Or read that somewhere? Okay. So, New York Times, the Diabetes Association, they're all saying diabetes is incurable. And, and here's the key. There's a little joke I want to share because it's... So how am I healing 61% of non-insulin diabetics in three weeks if it's incurable? How am I we healing 24% of insulin-dependent diabetics in three weeks? Okay? And how is it that we're healing 21% this is with 120 people, 21% of type 1 diabetics in three weeks and getting 31% off insulin. And yeah, it's a little bit of a miracle. It's, it's good. You're allowed to clap if you want. That's okay. But what's going on? What are we doing? How come it's so simple? I want to say, how come it's so simple and basic? Okay, and what I mean by healing is le a, a blood sugar less than 100 and no medications, no metformin, no insulin, no anything. What's this about? So I'm going to tell you a little story because it, it, it explains the problem. So Sheikh Nasuddin is kind of a Sufi uh, uh, comic sage. And one day Sheikh is looking... He's under a light pole, and he's looking on the dirt, and his friend says, Sheikh, what are you looking for? He said, I, I lost my keys. So you always start working, looking under the light thing, you know, under the light post. And they say, we can't find it. He says, of course you can't find it. I left it over in the dark, but it's too dark to look. <laughs> and that's why it's incurable. If you really don't think diet plays much of a role, and you can say you eat as much as you want and just take a little insulin, you will not cure diabetes. You're, you're not even close. Does that make sense? And so it's just like, where are you looking? If you're going to look on the lamppost, you really aren't going to find a cure. And that's why what they're saying is the truth. This is not disinformation. It's their truth. Okay? And, but their truth isn't the accurate truth. It's just their experience. If you look in the mysterious places, you get to understand a theory of diabetes, which is what I'm sharing with you, and how to go about healing it. But we got to, you know, you're seeing the bigger context first. Now, I have to share how I got into this, because I didn't start with that idea of incurable. Um, I've been actually curing, meaning taking people off their medication and get them less than 100 for, for about 40 years. So somewhere around 2005, a person came to me, living in the community, wanted to do a movie on live food. And I told him what I thought, which is, that's kind of boring. We've had enough of that. Let's do something that hasn't been done before. Let's take a bunch of people and put a live food diet and let's let them be diabetics, type 2 diabetics. And we took some pretty sick the average blood sugar on medication of this group was 247. That's pretty high, okay? And a lot of them, all, almost all of them were on, actually all of them were on insulin. So let's make it a challenge, okay? And so this movie arose in, you know, Raw well for 30. And we had really good results, as the movie suggests. And, and even surprised me because uh, one of the diabetics, and he still remains a type 1 diabetic, healed of diabetes. It's been eight years now. Type 1 diabetes. Type 1. I didn't say type 2. Type 1. And after two weeks, his blood sugar was in, in 83. It's really good. Okay. So I just kind of moved into it. So I, I didn't have... Uh, it was just one of the other things we're healing. What's the big deal? Okay. So, but somehow the message got through to me that maybe you should pursue this a little further. And that's how I've written the two books on diabetes and really have in mind to do a more definitive research with 400 uh, subjects, type 2 diabetics, and uh, really track it for a year 
We only track people for three weeks. I mean, so that's actually the next step. And, you know, it's possible funding's really coming. If anybody happens to be interested in funding, let us know. Because this, this will be a more definitive published paper that will make it very, very clear what has to be done and what can be done and also be tracking the whole live food uh, physiology. So, kind of excited about that. That's the next step to kind of round this off. In the meantime, we're going all over the world, as you saw. I've even talked to the Russian Congress about diabetes. It's like, it's a world problem. And we have to address it on more fundamental ways than can we manipulate your blood sugar. Okay. So what is diabetes? So I'm going to give you what I've arrived at as a theory of how to understand it. Okay. Because I call it the chronic diabetes degenerative syndrome. Chronic, okay, we got diabetes, and degenerative, because it's a degeneration. But really, we're not just talking diabetes, we're talking about glucose spiking, which I'll show you in a minute, and also prediabetes. One third of the U.S. population from the ages of 20 to 60 has prediabetes. And it almost all goes after about 10 years, 5 to 10 years, variable estimates here, into diabetes. After 65, 27% of the population, adult population obviously, you know, has type 2 diabetes. And about 50% are pre-diabetic, meaning they're going in that direction. And it's just a matter of time to when they get there. So, there's a degeneration that goes with it. And, 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 and spiking is when you could actually have a normal fasting blood sugar, less than 100, and you take, uh, and it looks fine, and then you eat and it spikes up. And that spiking up, just like diabetes is up here, and like prediabetes, which is a blood sugar more than, uh, fasting blood sugar more than 100, all create degeneration of the system in a variety of ways. That's what you need to get. So whether it's full diabetes, glucose spiking, or prediabetes, you're on this degenerative path. And I, I named some of the things. We're talking about your eyes and your kidneys. You get four times more heart attacks with, it, with this. And, and you actually, three quarters of diabetics die actually of, of heart attacks, okay? Okay, so we have a lot of things that start to fall apart. Also, three to four times more depression and also gastric paresis, which means kind of uh, very much weakened and ineffective digestive tract. So, that's what we're looking at. Now, what, how did this happen? Got to ask that. And so I began looking at, how does this happen? And when our bodies are put under this unnatural stress of excess food, really white flour, white sugar, and junk food is your key, we start to do a genetic and epigenetic downgrade. It's like, this isn't working. The body's saying, this is not working. So I have to reorganize my genes to cope with this situation. And that epigenetic, the epigenetic is, is like the protein sheath around your DNA. It's your interface between your DNA and your environment. White flour, white sugar, junk food, pesticides, herbicides, radiation, and so forth. So kind of see that picture. And the body, it just, it does acts intelligently. I, I have to reorganize myself. And that reorganization runs you into leptin and insulin and glucagon imbalances. Resistance is what they call it. And that's the metabolic dysregulation. That's the next step from the genetic downgrade. And then that moves us into chronic inflammation which drives the process. And then the white flour, white sugar, junk food, uh, stress, um, <coughs> uh, animal uh, products, animal foods, not a product, but animal foods, uh, all add to it. White, and, and also uh, pesticides, herbicides, Agent Orange has been shown to do it. Now they're now using Agent Orange with glycosates 
in some of the Dow chemical sprays. It's, it's like we know from, from our experience in Vietnam that Agent Orange is a very active uh, stimulator of diabetes. Okay? Then you have radiation. So it's all these things are impinging on our poor genes and saying, okay, okay, we're stepping back, we're trying to reorganize to cope with this. So that's really what's going on. And then with that, with the chronic inflammation, you start to have chronic degeneration. So when you see the big picture, you now know, hey, how do I heal this? Do I futz with the blood sugar? No. That's what everybody's trying to do. No, that's just a symptom out here. What do I have to do is I have to turn off that chronic degenerative pattern. Okay, that program. And there we go to it. It's the toxic degenerative epigenetic program that has to be reacted, turned off and activate the healthy program again. That's why we're successful. So we figured out how to do that. And we're doing that in really three weeks for a whole lot of people. Some people it takes longer, that's fine. And it's at any age. What do I mean by any age? Our oldest person was 96, 93 years old. She came in in a wheelchair, 13 different medications, high blood pressure, diabetes, severe arthritis, couldn't move. Okay, so where are we at three weeks later? She's out of a wheelchair, dancing around, literally. She no longer has high blood pressure, and she no longer has diabetes. And she's off our medication. Okay. And that's at 93. So I met her in New York in 94, uh, you know, the next year, because it's just, we're at a conference, and, uh, and there she was, perfectly fine. She had reset all her programs. Reset, because uh, blood pressure is like that, too. It's an epigenetic reset. So she's just fine. She didn't relapse. She just stayed on a diet. Everything worked. So at any age, we can do this. So keep that in mind. Don't think, oh, I'm too old for this. Mm -mm. That's not what's going on. You're not too old. Okay. And you're not too young either. You've got, you got to be, you just, all you have to do is love yourself enough to want to heal yourself. It right. doesn't matter what age. Okay? Right. Got it. Good. So, so, this is all fun. So people start to have a good time because our program works and they can see their, yes, the blood sugar does drop, but they can see themselves going out of leptin resistance and insulin resistance in one to three weeks. And that's more than a little exciting because nobody in the outer, in the allopathic, that really even knows, even, even they ask what questions they ask. Okay. Great. And all we're doing is turning off the toxic epigenetic and genetic program and reestablishing the healthy epigenetic genetic program. That's it. And how complicated. So you see, it's not complicated. Okay, I just want, I, I've used a bunch of fancy terms, but you'll see as, as we're evolving here, this is not complicated. This is called returning the natural way of living. How complicated is that? Okay, so part of what goes on, and you need a little bit, this metabolic memory keeps going. So you can, you can uh, try your tricks with blood sugar and do this and that, but you haven't turned off the toxic metabolic memory. And you haven't really turned off the insulin resistance. So insulin resistance, just, this is just so you get a sense of the dynamic. First, the liver comes insulin resistant. I mean, insulin doesn't really work in the liver very well. Then the muscles. Then the brain. You didn't know that, did you? One of the main causes of Alzheimer's disease is insulin resistance in the brain. Sugar can't get in to feed the hippocampus, which is your memory centers. So stop the sugar. This is what we do put people on coconut oil, which metabolizes in the liver, makes ketones, and they feed the brain and in about four days, if that's your cause, the insulin resistance, in the, you go bypass it and the brain regenerates. It is really, it appears to be a miracle, but it's 
pretty straightforward. So, okay, that's another type of diabetes. Uh, diabetics have twice as much Alzheimer's disease, and I just explained why. The brain gets insulin resistant. And we can just turn that around. Okay, so basically all these organs get insulin resistant, and it's like, where is the insulin going to drop the fat? Remember, insulin, as I, I kind of hinted already, stores fat. It takes sugar and stores it as fat. I'll tell you where it stores it. Right in your arteries. The arteries don't get insulin resistant, and this is why insulin is a driving force for causing uh, heart disease in diabetics. And why uh, three quarters of diabetics will die of heart attacks if they don't kind of turn things around. So you just got the, everything's basic. Once you get it, it's like, this is, this is just too simple. So we don't have to do anything. We just put people on a lower, you'll see, put it on the program and the, everything clears up. Now, what's that? That is a toxic metabolic organ. And it's giving off inflammatory cytokines that inflames the whole system. So part of the whole program, people kind of naturally lose fat, you know, lose the weight. In three weeks, average is 18 pounds. So we don't focus on weight, okay? Just what's going on. Um, maybe in a year, a person's 100% life will get to lose 100 pounds. But as long as you're losing the weight, that toxic metabolic program, organ, goes away. And when you have an excess of that, it also creates an excess of leptin, which throws things out of balance. Now, I don't want to get too complicated, but I think you get the program, this connection. That is putting off inflammatory cytokines. It flames the whole system, it flames your brain, flames your heart, inflames your, 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 your blood vessels. And is a chronic degenerative force. If we just kind of get that, and it drives the diabetes.